chapter 1 and the title of this is going to be keep loving one another that's what that's what we're going to be talking about today is to keep loving one another God is so good and he blessing us when we're on our job we have to keep on loving one another regardless of what we see or what we have to go through day by day we need we need to keep loving each other. That's the only way that we can make it 
uh, the love of God is strong. And we got to love like Jesus loved. Regardless of how a person is, we got to continue to love them. Because what would Jesus do? They talked about him. They crucified him. They nailed him on the cross. And only thing he was, only thing he did is came to carry the word. And so, you're going to be persecuted for his name's sake. So, all we got to do is to trust God and know that everything is going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Going to be all right. So, Jesus loves us. And so, all we got to do is keep trusting. Trusting in him. Know that everything is just going to be all right. All right. I'm going to read a little bit of this hymn from the international, the New International Version. Y'all, this is the Bible that I read out of where I can get a little understanding and clarity out of this hymn. So, I'm reading to you out of the New International Bible. Okay. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. He said, keep on. So that means, you know, we love one another. But he wants you to keep on loving one another. Continue to love one another. Because love is the only thing that we can make it through that provides for us. We loving one another. If I see you need I should be, if I can, I should be able to help you. Whether it's a kind word, whether it's financial, whether it be spiritual, whether it be anything, I have to constantly keep on loving you. Because God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to come to die for our sin. That's some kind of love, y'all. So he said, continuing, brothers and sisters, loving one another. Okay, it said, don't forget to show hospitality. Okay, hospitality for, to one another. And hospitality, I surrender, I surrender. Your job, when you find people, I work at Walmart. And when you we find people that come into Walmart, that's is where that's a place of worship where we work at. And we're supposed to welcome them in, supposed to be friendly, supposed to be hospitality to them. If they need to know where something is, we should be gracious enough to show them where it is at. That's helpfulness there. That's being helpful. Friendly. We supposed to be always friendly. Friendly towards one another. And we're supposed to always welcome. Welcome to Walmart. That's, your, that's a place that you can welcome someone in. Even in your home. 
it is, things have got so bad now, I can't say you can welcome anybody into your home or you can set anybody down for dinner. I remember back when we were little kids, our mom and then we used to go to this country church, and then on Sunday, you find the mothers will cook food at their houses and invited the preacher, his wife, and the congregation. Whether you be the choir members, whether you be the ushers, everybody came to that one house and they fed us. Hospitality. We don't do, you don't do not see that very much now that nobody inviting pastors and their wife or children to their house and feeding them. I'll let, I'll let them look like them done away with. But that's what we used to do. My mom may cook and everybody come to my mom's house. Or either Sister Caledonia or uh, Sister Baker. I'm just calling names that would do the same thing. Every Sunday, we would invite, they would invite you to the, their house. And you had to welcome them. They were friendly. They were helpful. We don't do it now because time just not got so bad. But even at your church, when you, when you people come to your church, you're supposed to welcome them in. Show yourself friendly. Help them out to find whatever seat. Yeah. Then most churches now is cooking. So before you leave, they are feeding you. You've got to have good hospitality. That's what hospitality is. Treat each other with love, kindness. Okay, let's get back down to it. We start that. Hospitality. It says, show hospitality to angels without even knowing it. See? It said that show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without even knowing it. Some people done did things. I know some of you all have done. I have even done it. You know, show hospitality to people I don't even know. Like I told y'all before, I am a people person. I will talk to anybody. I will help anybody. I will show anybody. If they come in Walmart, I don't care who it is. I ain't got no respect to person. I will help them out, show them where they need to be. And so I just love people. I guess I got it from my mom. My mom was a lovable person. She used to take other folks' children, and it was just like they own. Of course, she had many children herself. We couldn't understand it when we were young why she would take on somebody else's children. They would call her mama. Well, and we figured, all these children you got, why well, we need some more? But my mom was just a hospitality person that loved People love kids. Sure did. So I guess I take that a little bit out from my mom. I mean, I can, you know, just welcome anybody. You know, care who they is. Unless you're real, real mean. You just have to be a mean, low-down person for me not to get along with you. And then sometimes I can get along with mean, low-down people. So, oh, ain't that bad. All right, that's what hospitality. You know, you know, entertain angels and don't even know it. So you got to be mindful how you treat people, cause it could be angels, and you don't know it, and you done been all rude and treat them any kind of way. If you do them like that, you're doing it like you're doing it unto God. So be a little more hospitality if you're not. Be a little more kind if you're not. Be a little more welcoming people if you're not. Be a little more friendly. Okay. All right. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. The people in prison, you suppose them. Treat them nice, just like you was in there yourself. So I know when I belonged to the, the church of Greater Springfield, you know, we had some, some women, some women ministers. They would go, and even some deacons, would go every first Sunday to the jail house. And 
I wanted to go too. So I did, you know, uh, just to sing and minister a word to them. Do you know people that locked up in jail be glad to see people come there to sing and preach the word of God? And I found out I know some of them that was in there. I said, oh my God. I, oh my goodness. I know some of these people. So you never know who needs you. If you can ever get a chance. Now I can't say right now by all this going on. You know you might not want to go here and there. But if you can get a chance to go into the prison, the nursing home, hospital, anywhere people need you, even though I know you can't go in the hospital right now, and like I said, you probably ain't letting you in the jail house, then they won't let you in the nursing home. But God got a plan. It's not going to be this way always. But prepare yourself to just Go sometime to these places after all this has gone over and they allow you to come in. Think about other people's too that ain't got nobody. Ain't got nobody. God loves them as well as he do us. So, if you can get a chance, show hospitality to anybody. Okay. Where was we? It says, and those who are mistreated as if yourself was suffering. When you see somebody mistreat somebody, it, it should kind of make you feel bad that they're mistreating you. Speak up for those people. When somebody misuse somebody, you can say something. Don't do that. That is not nice and it's not godly to do that. Because when that, that hurt that person or hurt that person's feeling or whatever it may, it's supposed to hurt my feeling too. So you really got to have some compassion for others as ourselves. So when you see somebody mistreating somebody, say something. Because your voice may count for something. When that person may think, now why I do that? And I know the person that being mistreated, it should give them a loving, kind, all, to know that everybody's not like that person. Some people actually care for you. Some people actually love you. Okay. With that being said, it says uh, marriage should be honored by all. When people is married, everybody should honor them that being married. Whether you married or not, you should be able to honor, to see two married people together, you're supposed to be happy. Because that is a good thing. You should both honor that. So, oh, now ain't that, that's something. Because I tell most people, I, I know some people, I got a friend that good marriage. I know a lot of people that married, that get along good. That makes me happy. Just because I am not married. One day I probably will be, but I am happy for those that marry and can get along. That's the best feeling, the best thing that could ever happen. When I was married, I enjoyed a lot of stuff when I was married. Marriage is a good thing if you are joined together by God. And then you got some married, mine not been joined by God, but they can get along. If you can get along real good and live happy, I honor that. That's a good thing. Okay. Uh, should be honored by all. And the married bed kept pure for God will judge the adultery and all the all the sexual immorality. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Mm. And be content with what you have because God has said never will I leave you never will I forsake you see you got some things don't be the love of money nothing wrong with the money it's the love of other money that people would do anything for money God has already told you that he'll never leave you nor forsake you and if you marry the bedroom is pure. What he's trying to say, if you're married, don't go out there and cheat on. That's adultery. 
cheat on your wife or your husband because that's supposed to be sacred between you two and not nobody else. So if you're cheating, please stop and do what's right. Honor what God have gave you. Honor what you got at home. The grass may look greener on the other side. Take it from me, y'all. It's just a brown light. I mean, it's just a green light shining on brown grass. When you got a green light shining on brown grass, the grass going to look green. But once you get to the other side, that's all it is, is brown grass. The light that making it look like it's green. So honor, women honor your husband. Husband honor your wife. If God give you that wife, husband, treat her right. Wife, if God placed that husband in your life, honor your husband. It's a good thing. I wish I could have stayed married. But, you know, at the time you're young, you don't know no better. So, hey. It is what it is, but I just love good marriage. All right. He never leave you nor forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. He's my helper. I will not be afraid. What can minor moral do to me? He said, the Lord is my helper. But if you probably look at the King James, it probably says, Lord, is my light and my salvation. From whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid of? But this, it say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can minor more do to me? Not that. God got me. So I shouldn't be afraid of all the jails or what other folk, because they can't hurt me, because the Lord is my helper. Vengeance is not mine, said the Lord. It is his. I can't fight this battle, but God fights my battle for me. So why I'm, I'm, I'm afraid? Because he is with me, even until the end of time. End of age. Oh, bless the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Okay, remember your leaders. Your leader is your pastor, your government, any, your, your boss man, anybody have lead over you. Honor them, respect them. Okay, who speak the word of God to you. If you got a good pastor, he teaching you the word of God. Respect them. Treat them good. Because they carry the word of God. And God speak to them first. And he uses them to talk to you. It don't be them. Come on, man. Oh, the preacher talking about me. He all in my house. No, the preacher ain't talking about you. That's the Lord trying to chastise you and telling you to come out and do what's right. So, Remember and treat your leaders good because God has ordained them to lead over you. We're just like sheep and you know we need a shepherd. We need somebody to lead us to Christ. So that's the word of God. So you got a good pastor. Honor him. Remember him. He doing good. Ask the Lord to bless him and his family so he can keep on praying the word. Hallelujah. Okay. Remember your leaders who, who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their ways of life and intimate, intimate their faith. Entertain their faith. God, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See that? He the same God. What he did back then, he doing today. And he would do that forever. He loved 
people in the Old Testament back then. He loved us today, just like it was yesterday. And he loved us forever more. He just loves us. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teaching. Teaching, teaching, teaching. Do not be carried away about all kind of strange teaching. Y'all get in this word, learn this word for yourself. Because you got so many false prophets out there that teaching any and everything that's not in this Bible. Beware of strange teaching. Beware of people just telling you any and everything that is not in this word. Be aware of that. Be aware of people trying to lead you wrong. Because you got a lot of false people out here. And they big in high places. These mega churches, y'all watch what they're telling you. Read the word for yourself. Everything all, ain't all about money. They say that, but it's not. Why would you need a jet? To go in the way you can catch a, I mean, why would you need a jet? I'm talking about us, us. Why would we need one? You see the preachers and all them getting jets, some of them, mega churches. So they get us to travel to and for. Some of them will be more needed. Then I need it. I know I don't need it because I don't want to fly. All that money, people just throwing on the floor and they walking on it, like I told you in another video. That is not of God. Why would, why would the Lord? It ain't nowhere in this Bible said throw your money down there, on the floor, or up there in the pulpit where they at, and they running and walking on it. Find that in the Word, Father. Where is that in the Word? And then you walking through there, and the money, 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 money. <laughs> that sounds just like a foolish person. I ain't gonna call a person a fool. That sound like a foolish person that, you know, taking advantage of God people. Everything ain't about money. Everybody ain't gonna be rich. He said the poor be with you always. Now if the poor gonna be with you always, everybody's not gonna be rich. And no, no, no. What you do with the money. It's totally different. If you can help somebody, please do. Surround yourself with people that will help folks. Don't surround your per yourself with people that's so stingy, you can't even get a dollar out of them. Surround yourself by people that love to help other people. God will bless you with more than enough. My help is more important to me than money. I got good health, and I thank God for favor. Yes, money is good. We got to have it, pay bills and all that. The lover of money that people would do anything to get it, like you throwing it in the pool pit, and they running on it, walking like it's a game. Ain't no game. Until you show me that in the Bible, I will not do it. Pay my tithes and my offering, and I can always help somebody. They truly need it. If I just want to plant a seed, you got a lot of homeless people. You got a lot of people that lights and gas get turned off. That you know, some of them is in your family. That you know that you can plant a seed and help. That's gracious. Why would you start to throw money at a mega pastor? Money down there. They buying jets. They buying BMW. They buying uh, Mercedes Benz. And he you riding around in a uh, 2001 push, get up and push, where you still got to buy parts from it, and you just getting all your money away, just throwing it on on stony ground, the way it, it, it's not going to even prosper. It ain't on grass where it can grow green grass. Think about that. Don't listen to all this little foolish stuff. Get your Bible. Be like my past. Get your Bible. Read this word. Know this word for yourself because you got so many people trying to deceive God, folks. Like I said before, I don't have to belong to a mega church. I ain't going to say you can belong to wherever you want. I ain't got to belong to 
a mega church where they got jets and all this stuff that where they got six and seven thousand people or eight thousand people that belong to the church. I can't I can't remember all them people. I can't too hardly keep up with everybody at my church and stuff. So I said this to say this. We just got to be careful about people coming to us who we who we running up after. We got to be careful of people that are telling us something that's wrong. Know this word for yourself. So when they tell you something, you know they're telling you the truth. Don't y'all get me started because I didn't really come here to stay all day and stuff. Don't get me started because you know how I am. I go on and on and on. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Now, do not be carried away with all kinds of strange teaching. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by eating ceremony is food, which is of no benefit to those who do so. Why would you eat all this kind of food and thing where it ain't been a ceremonial food that it ain't benefiting you at all? We have an altar from which, with those who minister at the table tabernacle, having no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside of the city yeah, to make the people holy through his own blood. He sacrificed Jesus, sacrificed himself so that we could remain holy. So let's be holy to God. Let's thank Jesus every day, all day, for what he did. Came, died on the cross, shed his blood for us. So you ain't got to be all holy. They sacrificed and everything and animals and all that they did back in them days. That's in the Old Testament where they had to sacrifice the animal and blood. We ain't got to do that now. We ain't got to do that at all. Jesus came and died for us. His blood is pure that keeps us. He washed us cleaner than snow, just like snow. We just wipe the snow. He washes us every day. Cover us with his blood. Hallelujah, Lord. So let's be careful. And let's pray much for our leaders. Pray much for our pastors. They have a hard job, y'all. Hard job. Teaching us. Dumb sheep. We're just so dumb. I, and stop putting your mouth on the, on the pastor. How about, hey, you're going down that church, all that pastor want is money. It ain't like that. If you belong to any church, you know that the preacher has nothing to do with the money. Nothing to do with it. So how is they get how is he getting the money and it don't go in his hand? You got people that's over it. If you go to church, you know that the pastor is not over the money. So you're not just giving the money to the pastor. You're not taking care of the pastor. Because if you were taking care of him, he in bad shape. If he's looking for his members to take care of because they people have it, want to pay tithes and offering anyway. Your tithes and offer go through a whole lot. It helps keep the building, the building, that's the building of where the church help keep the building up, keep the building. Your light, your water, your gas, and everything that go on, where they give you these programs and all that. All that comes out of tithes and offer. And that's just another stuff. Let's get let me get off of that. That is something else. So we, we, I didn't come to talk about tithes and off. It, it, it's all about the uh, keeping on loving one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, let's, let's expound on this. Uh, real love for others show action. Hospitality to strangers. That was in Hebrew 13 and 2. 
is to empathize for those who are in prison or who have been mistreated. That's uh, Hebrews 13 and 3. You're supposed to have compassion for them, Adam. You be saying respect for marriage vows and contentment with what we have. Be content with what we have. Don't worry about what nobody else got. Be content with what God has blessed you with. Because He done blesses us abundantly. Bless me. I don't know about nobody else, but I've been truly blessed. And still blessed. I'm still here with my help and my strength. If I was gone on, I'm still blessed. But as I'm still living here on this earth, God has truly blessed me. Like I said, with good health, I may not have much money, but I got enough to take care of me. Food on my table. I mean, I got, you see, it's cold today. I got my long sleeves on and my uniform. Truly blessed. And if you can look at yourself, you truly blessed too. You can look and see all the things that God has done for you. I ain't got to talk about me, and I'm not boastful. I'm just telling you how blessed we are. Oh, yes. Okay, now let me get to keep talking now, y'all. Okay. It said, uh, Love that please God runs deep enough to affect our hospitality. Ain't that something? Love that pleases God. If you love God, that pleases Him. And that love going to flow down with hospitality to other people. And as you, as you know, I said hospitality is friend, being friendly, being generous, generous, acceptable, and entertaining of guests. Visitors or strangers or being friendliness, welcome, welcome and helpful. I already went over that. Okay, Hebrews 13 and 3, it said we are to have a sympathy for those in prison, especially for those not limited to Christian. Christian imprisonment for those their I mean, those for their faith. You know, especially the Christian folks. We got Christian folks that's in prison. Some of them in prison just for serving God. Just who they are. Somebody lied on them. And they in there just for who they serve. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. It ain't all about. It ain't all about going to prison for something that you did. A lot of Christians, in the, even in the last days, will be put in jail for who they serve in their faith. It says, Jesus said that when his true followers, his true followers, visit those in prison, that visit those in prison, they are visiting Jesus himself. That's Matthew 25 and 36. So Jesus said this now. Jesus said that when his true followers, people that is truly following God, visit those in prison, they are visiting Jesus himself. That's Matthew 25 and 36. It says prison is a mission field. That's a missionary. When you when you say that we got missions of the church, they're supposed to be able to go to the prison. That's a work. That's doing a work for God. Their mission. Our church got mission. Our church got it. Got missionary where they go and they visit the sick and they shed in. They go to the nursing home, go in the, the prison, they go to the hospital, they uh, either go in their home, anybody that's sick, people on a mission. Give your mission there. It said believers can send an evangelist and Bible teacher. See? It, it, it's an evangelist. Evangelist is a person that go to and for carrying the word, teaching the word. That was evangelism. 
When you evangelizing, you going to and fro. You ain't sitting on one place. You going over here. Anywhere you are needed, the word is needed, that's what the evangelists do. They don't stay in on one place. Don't stay in on one church. These people, they go to and fro on the hedges and the highway and the byway, carrying the word to someone that cannot get it. That was an evangelist going to and fro. Evangelizing God's word. Teaching the word. Oh, bless the Lord. Christian voice are needed regarding justice and mercy and funding staff training and rehabilitation program. Prison are an international problem. Mm. Y'all better let me stop there. Because I can go on and on and on and on. That's what the evangelist is. You know, the teachers, you get people that, that got good hospitality can go here and there that carry the word. That's why it is good, y'all, to go to Bible study. When your pastor is teaching Bible study, it is good. On Sunday, when he's teaching the word, it is good to hear the word. It is good for your church to have missionary people that going to and fro. It is just good to visit people that cannot get out and do it themselves. And in prison, they are locked up behind bars and they need that word. I don't care what they murder, sex fiends, or uh, the stole money, or the sold drugs, or the prostitute. I don't care what they have done. They need the word. They need the Lord. He loves them still regardless. He do not like the sin and do not like what we do. But he loves me. He loves us all. Never think <clears throat> that you done did something that God do not love you. He loves you. Just don't love the sin. Because be quick, y'all, to repent and change. Turn from the evil, wicked ways. Because God loves us. So do I, y'all. I love you, too. And if you would know me, know that I love you. Can I get out of character? Yes, I can. Jesus, help me, Lord. But you know what? I try to show love. Because I want to go to heaven. Heaven is my goal. Each and every day. Got to keep on moving. Moving in the right way. Lord, if I stumble. While I'm on my way, step aside. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't block my way. Because I'm going to keep on moving. Moving in the right way. Because I know heaven. Heaven is my home. Y'all let me stop there because y'all making it up as I go. So, that's all I want to say. I want to say keep on loving one another just as Christ has loved us. Y'all love one another. You can't go wrong with love. Love conquers all. So, <clears throat> I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Go find me something to eat. I had a great day. I pray y'all day was well. Jesus loves me. This I know. Father Bible tells me so. Jesus loves you so, so much. So do I. So, hit that like button on the video. That like, that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, shame on you. Go ahead on. Subscribe to my channel. 
if you want to be notified when I post another video, hit the bell. And it will notify you whether I'm whatever I'm doing, talking, crying, doing. Now I'm be doing a little bit of everything. Telling you about my life. Maybe cooking sometime. Go ahead on and hit the notification button. If you do not know how to subscribe to my channel, you got to go to YouTube and have your YouTube account. And all that is is your email address and a password. Then you can subscribe to my channel. Can't do it on Facebook. You have to go to YouTube. Because some people just don't know how. And like I said, the notification bell, hit that so you'll be notified with everything I put on there. And if you want to leave me a comment, anything about the word, or it's something that I haven't said right, or something that you need to know, or something you want me to know, put it in the comments. I welcome comments. God just has those he loves. If I tell you something wrong and you know that it's wrong, send me some scriptures. Send me this because I'm human. I'm still in this ouch flesh body. So I'm going to make mistakes. I try not to, but hey, I am human. But you know what? Y'all going to keep me on the right track. So with that being said, have a blessed and wonderful night. And I'm out of here.